Hello and welcome back to the Ashlands. So, you want to get your hands on that new rare flaming sword before the devs release the Deep North in 2030? Good news, you came to the right place. We'll be discussing the Ashlands' new mini-boss, Lord Rito, and his spawning, drops, stats, attacks, and most importantly, how to kill him. So without further ado, you can currently find a lonely, two-starred Lord Rito in his home, the Tomb of Lord Rito. To find this tomb, you'll need to explore some putrid holes and find a boss stone. Each stone will reveal one of the three mysterious locations in the Ashlands. Two of these locations will have a sword part sitting on a table, and the last has the Tomb of Lord Rito attached to it. Something to note is that each of the first two locations will have a boss stone in them, which points to the next one, so you'll really only need to find one stone in a putrid hole. Now only one of these mini-bosses spawn per world, and it does not appear to activate any new Hildir-esque raid events after killing him at this point. I must say I was quite disappointed to see that, as a no-star Rito is currently my favorite enemy to fight in this game, and there's no way to fight one without dev commands. These stars bring his total health up to an aggravating 7500, and with a stagger limit of 0.5, you won't realistically be staggering him. He's immune to poison and resistant to pierce, fire, and frost damage. The good news is that he's weak to spirit. Rito has a scaled up version of the same four attacks a warrior has. His first attack is a swing which deals 240 base slash damage, but the stars bring that up to a quite literally staggering 480 slash. His second attack is a thrust which deals 230 pierce damage. However, the stars of course bring that up to 460 pierce. The third attack is a faint slash dealing 250 slash or 500 slash at two stars. And the last attack is a faint thrust, which deals 210 pierce, also known as 420 pierce, with both stars. With these ridiculous damage numbers, how do you survive? The numbers would suggest that a root chest plate is your best shot, but this only helps against half of his attacks. The other half would end up doing even more damage. Realistically, he's going to one-shot you unless you pop bone mass, and bone mass cancels out the root chest plate, so you'll want to go with full heavy armor. However, even with bone mass and full heavy armor, if you're trying to brawl it out, he'll probably still kill you. Additionally, I would generally not recommend carrying a shield, as he tends to go straight through it. The main downside of the shield is due to the fact that you become staggered when an enemy makes it through your shield, and the extra damage you take will almost always ensure your demise on the first hit. By far, your best defensive options are distance using ranged attacks, in addition to using the magic hamster ball. The magic hamster ball in particular does unreasonably well against him, allowing you to survive multiple hits before recasting. Due to this, I will be using it every time I face him from now on. If you insist on brawling it out with melee weapons, your highest damage options are the storming weapons, i.e. the Storm Star, Nidhogg the Thundering, the Scourging Slayer, and the Thundering Berserker Axes. Despite this, I would highly recommend using the Primal Axes, since they give you the best chance of freezing him, and that's the best chance you have of surviving him. Something to note is that given Lord Rito's health and frost resistance, you won't be slowing him down with any of the frost weapons, making them mostly obsolete. Now, if you like surviving, your first ranged options are the bows. The Storm Fang is the most damaged by far, but the Root Fang remains a completely viable option as freezing him will make this fight much easier. Personally, if I use a bow for this fight, I'll be using the Root Fang. Surprising no one, the best arrows to use are the Silver Arrows, and if you cheap out and use your wood, you will certainly regret it. As for crossbows, your highest damage option is the Storm Ripper. While the Root Ripper retains its chance to freeze the enemy, due to the slow fire rate and decent knockback of crossbows, I would probably recommend the Storm over the Root Ripper. Now that we've gone over the more conventional weapons, let's talk about magic. Magic is going to be by far the easiest way to kill Lord Rito. While the Frost and Troll Stabs are pretty much useless, the level 4 Dead Razor allows you to sit back and summon skeletons every few seconds. This will keep you completely safe and whittle down his health. And while this is a great option, the most effective way to kill Lord Rito is the Staff of the Wild. Spamming this staff for a few seconds will pin the mini-boss up against the wall and beat the ever-living hell out of him. So this method keeps you completely safe and is the fastest I've ever seen him die. Upon defeating this mini-boss, you will always be rewarded with exactly one handle, thus allowing you to build one flaming sword per world. The last thing I want to cover was an exploit I found. Since this is a melee only enemy, you can trap him and render him completely harmless by placing signs around his feet. This will allow you to trap him and keep him as a pet, or alternatively, you can shoot him from complete safety this way. And with that, we've covered every aspect of the Ashland's new mini-boss. If you found this video helpful, it would be greatly appreciated if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons, as it will help others to find this video. Happy gaming, and don't get eaten by Rito.